A lot of businesses make the mistake of assuming that your branding is just a little logo or your name, your little icon, and it's not really that important. Well, actually, your branding incorporates everything about your business. Um, it's how you're recognised and how you're judged. It's people's perception of you and your quality. So it's very important to get that right and to consistently market who you are and the message you're trying to give to customers right from day one. Research has shown that strong brands increase customer loyalty, which then drives profitability. So a good brand, a good strong brand means you make more money. I'm not going to get into too much depth today with the topics. This is kind of a summary of branding is a huge topic, so I'm going to cover six um, important topics to understand within branding, which are associated across your marketing. So your brand is the perception in a, in a customer's or a perception in your potential customer's mind of the value you bring. So it's important to manage your brand to be telling the right things to customers. You need consistency across your branding. I don't know how many times I see people with their marketing using different colour schemes, a different style of message, a different style of content. Um, I mean, this just mixes up messages and confuses people to what you're actually about. So businesses need to brand themselves consistently across marketing because everything is relative to your brand, customer service, word of mouth, all of those aspects will contribute to your brand. So it's important that we manage that at every step of the value chain. Everybody in your company buys into that message and communicate, communicating consistently. So the second bullet point of the day is brand image and brand identity. So people kind of confuse these two terms, but they do work together, but they're separate. So the brand image is my perception of your brand, for example. So what does a customer think about you? So all your marketing efforts try and influence the image somebody has in their mind of a particular brand. So what, what is your perception of a brand like Apple or Nike or maybe the bank that you're with? They evolve a different brand image relative to the image identity is the flip side of that. It's all your marketing efforts trying to influence and nurture a particular image in the customer's mind. How you want to be viewed, how you want to be remembered. So all those marketing activities, that from business, that's your identity. The image is then how that is perceived by customers. One way you can mould an image in a customer's mind is to create a brand story. The brand story can be used across copy on your website, social media, it's all telling people your story, getting to know them, helping them get to know you a little bit better. So it's all about humanising that relationship. The next topic is value proposition. So how do you uniquely offer value to your customers? It's your point of difference. What makes you the brand that people should deal with above your competitors? If all else was equal, similar product or service, what is that little bit of difference about you, which you can use across your marketing advertising to attract a certain kind of customer? So it's your targeting of a certain market segment, your positioning is all dependent on what your value proposition is. What's unique to you that customers will remember. Research has shown that three pillars of your value proposition which needs to be communicated to your customers are quality, innovation and reliability. Customers make all sorts of associations with different businesses. These are dependent on their previous experiences, it might be word of mouth, marketing. Any interaction with the brand will create a new association. So these associations built up over time, put together subjectively in an individual consumer's mind, will then dictate their image of your brand, their perception of what you're about and what your value is. Customers 
always some sort of subconsciously asking questions about your brand, such as are they trustworthy? What are your values? What are you all about? You can associate different human characteristics to your brand, such as could be fit, or you could be cool, or you could be tough, or you could be funny. You know, these are the different characteristics of brand. With the rise of social media and digital marketing over the last 10 or 20 years, it's got rid of a lot of competitive advantages that companies had. So companies are beginning to understand the importance of creating relationships with customers. This is called relationship marketing. So it's all about building trust. So then that trust theoretically turns into business from that customer. Loyalty. So with relationship marketing, it's a combined effort with sort of your quality of your business, your customer relationship, your promotion across social media, um, and other forms of marketing. And it's all about nurturing relationships. So then that person trusts you, and then theoretically they're more likely to become a loyal customer. They're more establishing a relationship with customers then can contribute to the equity of your brand. So. Brand equity can be defined as sort of that added extra that people are willing to pay for a product or service, that, that premium. So a good example of a company with a lot of brand equity is Apple. So how can Apple sell a phone, the same technology as a $500 phone from an alternative brand? It's because of the brand equity, which they were able to position their brand as a premium offering and then they've sort of built up a lot of loyalty with their customer base over the years, which then turns into brand equity. How is somebody willing to pay a little bit extra for a product or service which is essentially the same as something else they can get cheaper? So the benefit of a strong brand is you can charge that little bit extra. You become more profitable, obviously. It's the influence that somebody's brand knowledge has on their consumption. The added value of your product in the consumer's mind, which isn't necessarily to do with tangible aspects of the product or service, it's all else is relative. Your price is up here, and the competitors is up there. It's because they've got more brand equity. Chances are their customers might trust them a little bit more. That could have been built up over a period of time. So I hope you enjoyed this little discussion about branding and how a brand works, sort of very basically. Next week, the topic will be marketing mix. It'll be similar doing this again. On Thursday, each week, we'll be hosting a webinar to discuss what was talked about in today's video. So if you're interested in signing up to the webinar, I'll leave a link 